You know, I wonder what the quickest way to get the internet mad is. It's probably to say something like this. Episode 1 of Halo on Paramount Plus is awesome. What's going on everyone, James here with another real review and recap and today we're going to get into episode 1 of Halo the series on Paramount Plus. It's now streaming so go ahead and watch it and come back to this because yes, we're getting into spoilers. My spoiler free thoughts of episode 1 and 2 are right at the top of the screen so you can go ahead and find them there. But guys, I am so excited to talk about this and all the in-betweens because man, I was holding a lot back in my last review. If you don't know much about this 9 episode series, it's directed by Otto Bathurst and it's starring Pablo Shriver as Master Chief, Natasha McAlone as Dr. Halsey, and Yiren Ha as Quan A. Now this is following the Silver timeline which 343 Industries has explained in great detail that it's not canon to the video game franchise, so there are creative liberties that are going to be taken by the showrunners, and some of them work, some of them I'm a little like, uh, okay, we have to see how that'll work out, but for the most part, I'm loving what I'm seeing. Now, it's already been renewed for a second season, there's a lot of praise surrounding the first two episodes, and you know what, as a Halo fan, I'm living. Now guys, before we get into all of my thoughts on episode 1, if it is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James, where I love breaking down movies and TV like this all the time, so if you do too, go ahead and hit the big red button below, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, tap on that bell, hit the thumbs up button if you're a Halo fan just like me, and go ahead and sound off in the comments and let me know, did episode 1 work for you, and if it didn't, why? Because guys, we are getting into this, I'm excited, and uh, like I mentioned already, this is a spoiler review. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of episode one, which is titled Contact. We go ahead and get introduced to the planet Madrigal, not the family Madrigal, the planet Madrigal. It's the year 2552, which is a long ways from now, and it is a war-torn planet. I actually love the CGI for many of the planets that we get introduced to. High Charity looks great, Reach looks amazing, and Madrigal is a desert barren planet, but I thought it was really impressive to see what they pulled off. But the one thing that I really love loved about episode one is that we don't start with the spartans we don't start with the elites we start with humans we get introduced to janka who's playing a card game with some people of madrigal who are working with the general jin ha and then eventually we get introduced to kwan who is jin ha's daughter now Yiren Ha, I said it in my spoiler free review, but she gives an amazing performance in episode 1. It is a good mix of innocence, ambition, and also fear, because we do eventually get introduced to the Covenant pretty quickly, y'all. I mean, that Covenant phantom that she was looking at, I mean, she knew it was trouble. All her friends, they took these drugs from this plant or whatever, so they were tripping, and they thought it was the UNSC. Well, um, they found out very, very, very quickly. It was not the UNSC. And this is the very first moment that I really understood the brutality that was going to be showcased in this season. The plasma weapons taking off the head of Quan's friend and then dismembering the legs from her other friend was actually really intense and I did not expect that. So if you're looking for a TV-14, TV-PG Halo, this ain't it. This is TVMA, y'all. So eventually when the elites breach the gate and try to go ahead and take over the planet Madrigal in search of what I'm guessing was the artifact, which we'll talk about later, man, it was so cool to eventually see our Spartans drop in. And who's leading the pack? Of course, none other than Spartan 117, Master Chief himself. The way he just drops in was sick anyway, and I just love the sweeping shot up and seeing Master Chief pick up his head. I was like, yo, it's going down. Now the action in this entire opening sequence was incredible. I love the blend of CGI and live action for the Spartans because, guys, let's be honest, how can you practically show a Spartan jumping like no other humans jumped before? But on the other side of things, the CGI for the elites was a little bit jarring at first. It did take me a maybe a good 5-10 minutes to really get used to that because they didn't necessarily look that smooth at first, but the energy sword looked great. So we saw that on full display when you know the energy sword's being stabbed through the door and stabbed through Jin Ha's heart. Rest in peace, dog. But throughout this entire firefight, we get introduced to another unique but also overused point of view, and that is the first person HUD display that is shown. And it's kind of cool for fans of the video game franchise, but I almost wonder if it's going to take away general audiences from those scenes. Because after a while, it took me out of scenes. It was just used way too much. And I loved seeing the shield, of course, the meter at the top, and then seeing Chief identify, you know, the elite, which. Well, my theory is one of the elites he identifies might be the Arbiter. Shout out to my boy Zach for actually bringing that up. And I'm not going to lie, 
I really agree with him. But also, we start to understand that this show is going to, I guess, try to put us in the helmet of the chief, literally. So after the fallout on Planet Madrigal, the firefight of course results in many many casualties including Jin Ha and Quan, well she gets taken back on the Pelican with Chief. But before that guys, we do get introduced to uh, an artifact that kind of reminds me of Forerunner tech. Yeah, this gives me Forerunner vibes, you guys, but I do think it really is an activation index. But above all else, you know, Chief touches it and then everything sort of illuminates. We see what looks like a halo ring. And I just, well, I don't just think, I definitely know that this is one of the keys to essentially activate the halo ring. So you can tell why the Covenant were searching for it, but Chief took out everyone except for one elite that gets away on a banshee and i do think again that this elite will end up being the arbiter and before we transition back to planet reach and get to know dr halsey here and the unsc themselves we do get this amazing intro sequence yeah the intro for this show is sick y'all if you're just a fan of master chief in general you're gonna love it man it looks so good all of the effects the actual mjolnir armor being put on who i assume is john and then you get master chief revealed i like the music too here so far in episode one i think that the score is using a blend of what marty o'donnell did with the original trilogy score and i kind of like the futuristic sounds that are being played with here i don't think it's necessarily great but it's good enough so eventually we get taken right into the lab of dr halsey who is well she's working on something secretive and we come to know it might be the cortana system and oh my goodness is cortana different here now we don't necessarily know the extent of the cortana system yet but it does seem to be taken into a different route it's not necessarily the cortana you are used to in the video games it seems to be some sort of system that is derived from an actual human but more on that in episode two i actually grew to like natasha mackalone's performance as dr halsey she is cunning sassy has an attitude that is fit for the character but i loved her and admiral parangoski's standoff shabana azmi does a really good job here she is no nonsense she does not want dr halsey messing with anything no artifacts no spartan none of this she's very questionable actually when it comes to spartan 117 and for good reason up into a certain point of course they begin to understand that when john touched that activation index he saw things in his past he had flashbacks he saw young john he saw his parents and then when halsey finds out about that let's just say things are gonna be flipped upside down and slowly but surely i started to realize what they were doing with the unsc and halsey they're showing us how unethical they really are and i love that so far between both episodes that i've seen guys it is just so cool but in episode one more specifically we learned that the unsc they're not the good guys either and eventually we get taken back onto the pelican with kwan and master chief you got kwan freaking out of course she doesn't know where she's at she's technically a rebel according to the unsc so they got to figure out a way to get her back on ground without any sort of consequence so you have Quan and miranda keys who are having this conversation not in the same room of course but dr miranda keys is played by olive gray here and y'all i don't know about you but i love her performance so far i do think she'll get more screen time as we get deeper into this season i hope we do because she's showing promise here as a very i would say smart intelligent yet she understands how to get what she wants type of character and that one-on-one -on -one conversation between miranda keys and kwan was really intense because essentially miranda's trying to barter with kwan now that doesn't work but we do get more time with miranda keys and captain keys because her father walks into uh her his daughter's uh lab and man there are so many cool easter eggs here alone that should make you jump for joy as a halo fan because i smiled very wide we get our first look at the flood in episode one so i'm guessing they already know the flood exists so the timeline really is a little skewed here but i kind of like it because it just goes to show you that they're around so who's to say they won't show up again and can y'all imagine if we get grave mind oh and then finally, we get a little bit more focus on Chief himself, where he's starting to realize that, man, he remembers a little bit about his past, and he is a human being after all. He's not just this warrior that was built up by Dr. Halsey, but he starts to remember, man, I had a childhood. He somehow drew the activation index as a kid, which is very weird. Maybe it's something that's similar and not exactly that, but you know, time will tell. And then he starts to remember his father, his mother, and you know, this is probably not good if you're Dr. Halsey because you don't want John going, you know, AWOL and just remembering, oh my gosh, I, my childhood was stolen from me. But 
what Chief does is he's just pondering upon that fact until he gets Quan into the same room as him and they share a meal together. But guys, I'm sorry to say, um, he got himself a little message that he probably didn't want to see. And y'all know Miranda Keys was not having that. And I'm sure Captain Keys didn't feel comfortable giving that order either. But, you know, the council gets together and they're like, you know, we, we can't have this. And eventually, I think Chief catches on to the fact that maybe this isn't a decision that he wants to make. So Halsey being Halsey and of course Admiral Parangoski being herself, they decide to take matters into their own hand when they realize that Chief has not yet killed Quan and they decrease the oxygen levels in the Pelican, which is such a jerk move. But this was one of many epic moments in episode one where you think Chief is down and out for the count, the camera kind of pans away and then Chief grabs one of the panels on the ship, opens it up and turns that oxygen back up to 100 and says, you know what, UNSC, y'all are playing dirty. It was such a cool moment because it is very much a Master Chief moment and I just love to see what Pablo Shriver could do in this role. He's doing such a good job with everything but even before we get on to some of my more overall thoughts here guys, I gotta say it was a little odd seeing him take off his helmet in this episode. And I know why he did it, because he had to build trust between him and Quan. I mean, Quan is holding a battle rifle right at his chest. Of course, it's not going to do much, but I think Master Chief understands that this has implications that are bigger than just this one moment. So he takes his helmet off. He explains how important his helmet is, even in the scene before that. So I am a little confused as to why he had it off for pretty much the remainder of the episode. It was... It was a choice. I'm not used to that as a video game fan of the franchise. I understand that they have to make this accessible for those who are not fans of Halo, but it's not the worst thing in the world, guys. But I really just love seeing this Quan and Master Chief dynamic that's blossoming, and we do get more of it soon, but guys, it is just working for me. So eventually, the Pelican is getting much closer to UNSC headquarters, and we're thinking, y'all, this is not good for either of them in that ship, but... They lost power just, I think, just after they had landed and they were looking for a way out, right? I mean, essentially, they were looking to escape the UNSC. And what does Chief do? He's like, hey, listen, this thing emitted some power. Let me touch it again. He touches the activation index or the artifact, as they're calling it, and it powers up the entire ship. And that Pelican just turns around and gets the heck out of there. So... That was pretty cool. So we have the Chief and Quan escaping the UNSC. Dr. Halsey's in hot water. And let me tell y'all, something is going down with the Covenant. Because we do get a little bit of a tease when it comes to the Blessed One, a character played by Charlie Murphy. This is a human, you guys. And it's their connection, essentially the Covenant's connection to the human race. But also, this is the Blessed One, right? So the name itself is like, wow, this is pretty important. But the reason they named her that is because she's one of maybe two or three people that we know of so far that can touch this activation index and actually allow it to work and maybe activate that halo ring. I love the language that they were using here too. I was watching this with subtitles and I can't remember what it was called, but I feel like I might have heard it before. I just really love the immersiveness of this moment and man, everything on High Charity was beautiful. The CGI before we even get indoors was incredible. And then when we're there, it just absolutely worked. The set design, the production design everywhere in this episode was just really impressive and pretty authentic to the games. So hey, I mean, they're nailing it, even though this is a different timeline versus the canon we're used to. I just, if I had to predict anything when it comes to the blessed one so far i just think that she is eventually going to try and blend in because they mentioned that she is the only one that can really i guess serve as both a human and someone who's working with a covenant now i had my reservations before this series even launched because in the trailer i'm like oh no they're making a human the one thing that the unsc is scared of no they have to be scared of the covenant but i do eventually think that this human will get the covenant close enough to where they become again the antagonists that we're used to from the video games i just don't see the blessed one being that main villain for long and if you're wondering what the heck happened to cortana well we don't necessarily see the cortana that we saw in the trailer here but we do get a mention of the cortana system and it doesn't really look anything like i'm used to seeing it's much different maybe they're actually taking a human that might be very smart and like using that human's brain and putting it into a system and then that system is going to work uh, with the spartans or work with uh, master chief I i'm curious to see where they go with this uh, we'll talk more about that in episode two but for now i will tell you this is a uh, it's a different 
you know, turn for the story. And I'm not sure if I love it yet, but that's the one thing I'm a little reserved on. But hey, if you're worried about Pablo Shriver as chief himself, I wouldn't be. I mean, I think he works so far. His voice is fitting. I like the bit of emotion injected into the role itself. And I mean, they just nailed the design for chief. The Mjolnir armor looked amazing. I mean, heck, even the silver team looked great. We didn't even talk about the silver team yet, man. That fire team is so sick. My favorite is Riz, but I think a lot of people will enjoy Kai Sharpshoot and you have Vanix heavy duty no nonsense put a pole in that elite and stick them up in the air kind of attitude so i will tell you that this episode really just worked for me again episode one is a great introduction into this season and i do think this episode gets better and better as it goes on and that for me was surprising as well because man episode one's intro that opening that cold open sequence was really cool and i thought well how much cooler can you get and i do think that the level of emotion and the grounded uh, attitude that this episode has so far is kind of paving the way forward for the tone of this season which is more so us kind of being aware of this war affecting not just the UNSC and the Covenant but the entire galaxy and I've said it once before and I'll say it again I do think that this has potential to be the best video game adaptation across any medium that we've ever gotten whether it be movies or TV I think that this might have that ceiling I am in love with it so far you guys and I really hope that when you watch it you'll let me know if you're in love with it too so go ahead and get loud down below in the comments and let me know exactly what you think because if i had to grade this episode alone give it an a so yes that is the end of this episode one spoiler review you guys thank you so much for coming over and talking some halo with me hope you are enjoying all the easter eggs as well as you go through it i rewatched this episode again after i finished it because i even noticed that one of the grunts i'm sorry one of the elites said wart 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 pretty funny and hey, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the big red button below. Stay subscribed to the channel and tap on that bell, y'all, because guess what? We're coming back next week for episode two's spoiler discussion and review. So you're not going to want to miss out and hit the thumbs up button again if you're a big Halo fan. Alrighty, y'all. Well, you know what? I'm going to go and maybe rewatch episode two because I only saw that one once. And uh, one of my favorite characters so far in the series gets introduced. So it's just going to be a blast. Alrighty, y'all. Again, thanks so much for watching. And I'll catch you at the next screening.